no flex. Flex. The live is one in the six. Hey. Hey. With the runner boy, you make no question. Yo. You would run a motherfucker high stepping. Yo. Hey, you never had a big enough weapon. Hey. Hey. Motherfucker hey. never learned your lesson. Right. Hey. I'm an 88 pack nigga. Woo. Woo. I'm an 88 pack nigga. Uh, 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 I mean, they walk drink blood, things out. Full moon, motherfucker. Change like a hoe, nigga. I'm just a nigga from the hood trying to stack a little cheddar for the money. And there he is. All right, we made it. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. A man that needs no introduction. Y'all already know who I am. Drew Titan Bros on deck. Shout out to the mighty LDBC. I see y'all in the chat. We're starting in a timely fashion. You know, some links have been sent out. Um, the man that needs no introduction, but I'm going to ask him to do it anyway. Bobby. Uh, I'll tell you what. I can... I can uh... I can't talk up myself that big. <laughs> <laughs> no, but please, you know what? please, please do. Humble boy, humble boy from the from the neighborhood out in the suburbs. You know, nobody mm -hmm. nobody figured I'd make it anywhere going into the inner cities and do anything well. But I got the greatest compliment from a gentleman named Joe Greer, former junior welterweight state champ in New Jersey, called me the white boy with soul. <laughs> <laughs> best comp best compliment I've ever had to this very day. And I just turned six. <laughs> White boy with soul. Come and get it. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, man. Um, let everyone in the chat, because you know we got some young bucks in there. We got some OGs. We got some young bucks. Let everyone know who you are. Well, my name is Bobby Chez. I turned pro in 1980 after uh, fighting pretty much just a short amateur career, 24 and 2. Became a little bit of an overnight sensation. Undefeated till my 21st fight. I lost the fight to Mustafa Hampshire. Broke my hand in the fight. They had to rebuild it from bone with bone from my hip. Went mm. on to win the light heavyweight title, cruiserweight title, and super cruiserweight title. Be a three-time world champion. Then started my career at Showtime, broadcasting as an expert analyst. And I did so many fights with Holyfield fights, Tyson fights. It was just it was a great great career. Yes, indeed, man. And, and like I said, you know we um. Uh, what we have going on here, we have, uh, uh, um, we are the true supporters of the sports. Like I was talking to you earlier, we watch everything. As you can see, uh, my my OG, one of my OGs, Bruce goes, Bruce Gas is in the building. How you doing, Bruce? Awesome, awesome, Bobby. I, I spoke to you yesterday, brother. Yes, I re I remember the voice and the name. All right, my man. It's going to be uh, th Drew. Thank you so much for inviting me on here, brother. Absolutely, man. Absolutely, man. You know, um, listen, man, uh, you, you know, Bobby, we, we love boxing. We love boxing, man. And uh, we, we, we just don't watch, like I say, the uh, the guys that uh, do this full time, man. We, we I come from I'm talking about ABC, NBC, CBS, ESPN, USA, all those days. Yeah. All of that stuff. All of that Back stuff. Back in the day. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The glory days. That's what it was in the 80s. The glory days. Oh, man. The glory days, man. I, I miss that era, man. I miss that era. Saturdays, you know, uh, watching fights, running from room to room. You know, you had, you couldn't change. You couldn't change the channel. We had, I mean, the rota, no remote. You know what I mean? You got to well, watch that's it. That, yeah, that's going back way back in, uh, in the 60s for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. So, um, man, I don't even know where to begin. Uh, well, Start from the beginning. Uh, your, your beginnings in the uh, in the sport. How'd you get started? Well, you know, here here's the funny thing. Um, as a kid, my dream was to be a running back, be a football player. And at the age of ten, my father, I was ten. My brothers Vince and Tony were nine and seven. He didn't ask us to go to the gym. He he demanded that we go. He said, "We want to take you to the gym every day after school. Your mother's going to drive you down. I'm going to pick you up, take you home. You're going to work out. You're going to learn how to fight." And my father's idea of that was he thought every young man should learn how to handle himself. Now, I, I was born in Orange and East Orange in, the, in literally in the urban areas in the suburb. I was I know what it is to be a minority because all my friends were black and Hispanic. Only had one or two white kids in the whole neighborhood. So it was kind of odd when I moved to Wanakew, everybody was white. And I was like, I'm not comfortable here. <laughs> so eventually, I'm going back into Patterson every day after school. So now I'm back in the neighborhood I like. Everybody's black and Hispanic, only a few white people. But as I started to fight, some of the big, some of the fighters who were more advanced and professionals, like a guy named Joe Greer, he's one of my, he's my, one of my heroes, always will be. They taught me. I guess not everybody can do the same thing, 
but more black and Hispanics learn how to move with their body differently. It's what we call soul. Like Michael mm -hmm. Jordan, the way he floats through the air in, right. in basketball, it looks like it's impossible, but it's it's soul. Larry Bird was just as great a ball player, but the way, you know, technical perfection, not the same rhythm, not the same style. Anyway, having said that, at the age of 10, I trained from September 72 till January of 73, right, right the day before my 11th birthday, and I boxed for the first time. And I boxed with a kid who was about the same age as me, but he was about 20 pounds heavier. And when you weigh 75 pounds, 20 pounds is a lot of pounds. Yeah. So, but I beat him. I beat him so silly in the first round that the trainer in the gym took him out of the ring and put another kid in who was a, who was 13 years old, who was a junior Olympic two-time champion. And I looked at my father, nervous as hell. And my father just looked at me and he said, "You do this." And I was more afraid of my father than I was of the kid. But I, I eventually I handled myself so well that I got a standing ovation from everybody in the gym. That day I believed I was special, and that day I decided. I was going to fight for a living someday. Man, that's, and that's deep. And, that, and you know what? And literally eight years later, I turned pro. At, at the age of 18, I turned pro. And, you know, the rest is history. I made it. I, the odds were against me, but I made it. Now, uh, well, well, Bruce, you got any questions? I don't, I don't think people realize what, you know, what, 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 what an intelligent person you are, Bobby. You are, you are pre-med. I mean, you're, you're, you're a member of Mensa. Which, uh, if people don't know what that is, bro, that's a uh, extremely it's high a IQ. It's the top two percent of the smartest people on the planet, <laughs> which is which makes me an oxymoron. Because usually the fighters come from the suppressed minorities of each era, not from people who are educated straight A students. Those people won. And again, I turned down four partial pre med scholarships and a senatorial appointment to West Point. God. I turned it down, you know. But here's the reason why. I'm not religious, so I don't mm. believe in God. So the mm. only way I can be in history is I got to be in the history books. Now I'm in sports history, three times, light heavyweight, cruiserweight, and super cruiserweight champion. Nobody else has those titles during that time in history than me. Mm. So I've satisfied, I satisfied the reason I did not go to school. That was my question, brother. Well, my father told me, he said, you have two years to, you have two years to establish yourself or I'm pulling you out and you're going back to school. And inside the two years, I was ranked in the top 15 in the world, so I, I, I got the job done. Well, Unfortunately, that, my dad didn't live to see it because he committed suicide, but that's a whole nother story. Oh, boy. I'm sorry oh, to hear that. Yeah, I'm sorry to hear uh, that. Getting to, getting to great places sometimes causes great sacrifices, and that's just the way it is. Unk um, Funk, salute, bro. Long time no see. How are you? I see the chat, man. Salute y'all. We just cooking. We got we got a rock star in the house. Anytime <laughs> I, I see a fighter, I call y'all rock stars, man. Y'all rock stars. I like that. Me. For real. Appreciate for real. it. Yeah, man. So um let me ask you. Um, I'm I'm gonna jump around a bit, man. Cause uh, go ahead, dude. Jump wherever you gotta go. I'll have an answer. All right. Um the fight that puts you on the map. Just name one. Name one that you feel like, you know what, this this is the one that really made the public turn heads. Well, the one that put me on it, I was fighting uh, Marvin Hagler's half-brother, Robbie Sims. Southpaw, oh, undefeated, same record as me, almost the same age. And, uh, you know, I beat him solidly over, over 10 rounds. And then everybody said, okay, he can fight. Wow, man. What year was well, that? you know what, here's the thing. Think about this, though. And it's, it's, almost, it's almost apropos. It's almost fitting. But because I was white, nobody gave me credit. I can't. He can't fight. He's white. And I, I don't. Don't get me wrong. I did the same thing. People say, "Oh, Bobby, this guy's he's an up and comer. He's thirteen and zero. He's from Oklahoma." I said, "He can't fight." Wow. <laughs> we we fall into the same we fall into the same same traps, the same stereotypes. But I learned in the gym from brothers and Spanish guys. All of them. I mean, and I'm telling you. I was as good as them. Every once in a while, the guy would come in the gym and say, I want to spar. And I would say, I'll spar with you. And he'd look at me like I had three heads because he didn't know who I was. And right. I didn't, outside my gym, I didn't really have that big a reputation. And so I turned to Joe. I said, Joe, you think, you think he's too light for me? He's not dark enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, but it was, well, we, would have, we would have fun with it. And, you know, sure enough, we would spar. 
And after after the sparring session, the guy would come over to me and say, "Are you really white?" <laughs> I, said, I, I said, "I look white. I look. Does I, do I look white to you?" <laughs> I mean, it became a thing. It became a thing. They used to say he's white, bright, and polite, but can he really fight? Everybody had fun playing oh, with wow. him. Bob, Bobby, how about, how about that fight with Mustafa Hampshire? Was that when you said you can't make 160 anymore, bro? You I, know, you know to what? I, 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 I took, took water pills for two days to, just to make the weight. And, oh. and I was so, so exaggerated. I was so dehydrated. I just couldn't do it. And couple that with I broke my hand right in my right hand. The first two metacarpals broke through the top of my hand. So every time I hit him with the right hand, it hurt me more than it hurt him. But look, uh, I, I, that day. I, I, I was shocked at that fight, bro. You know what? At that I just wasn't as experienced as, as I should have been. I, 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 I still needed to be better. I almost re had a rematch at light heavyweight, but he lost in his title. Try, he tried to get a light heavyweight title. Donnie Lalonde beat him. Mm. And you fought Lalonde. Yeah, beat him. I fought him as a cruiserweight and beat him pretty good. <laughs> how tough? How tough? How tough was Lalonde to you? To you? How tough was he? Okay, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna explain something to you just so you understand the verbiage. Tough is your ability to take an ass whooping. Good is your ability to give one. He was not very tough, but he wasn't a bad fighter. He was a good boxer, but I knocked him down the first round. He took off for the rest of the fight. He never engaged again. No, he ain't want no, he ain't want no smoke. He want no well, more he, smoke. He, he told me after the fight, he said, I'm not strong enough to fight it this way. He said, you're just too strong for me. He said, I can't fight it this way. Wow. Wow. And I, you know, and I fought in six different weight divisions and won world titles in three of them. So I figured I wasn't too bad. <laughs> Slobodai Kaka was that first title, bro. I remember that IBF. Uh, Slobodan Kachar, title. yep. Yeah. Yugoslavia. Oh, wait. What year was that? Yeah, he was undefeated. He beat Eddie Mustafa Muhammad for the title over in Italy. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, Freddie Pacheco had, had him really high. God damn. Y'all bringing back memories, man. Well, this is I, 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 the old days. I, I I miss real boxing, man. I miss real boxing. Um, I do too. We we, we had. You a, know, it's funny. A, it's funny that when uh, Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder fought the first fight. Mm -hmm. Now the first fight they called a draw. It wasn't a draw. Deontay Wilder knocked him down, and that that saved him so they could make it a draw. But here's the thing: with Tyson Fury learned in the first fight was that Deontay Wilder isn't that tough. He's not a tough guy. He doesn't take that great a shot. And I told my friends in the second fight, I had two guys that said to me, Bobby, we want to bet the fight, but we want to bet big money. I said, take, I said, listen, if Tyson Fury learned what I learned watching the fight, he learned it in the fight. I said, but he, he'll knock, he'll knock Deontay Wilder out within, within mid to late rounds. Did exactly what I said. I knew he, he picked up on the two, knocked him out cold. See, here's um. the thing. Tough is your ability to take an ass whooping. Nobody can make you tough. You're either born tough or you're not. Can't make exactly. you tough. We could teach you to be good, be smooth. Teach you can't teach you speed though. That comes natural too. So here's the thing: if you're not tough, it's going to be a rough business for you to be participating in. <laughs> I know the chat's looking at my face. Um, you know that's a that's a very very touchy subject on on, on this side of the street, Bobby. And what um, yeah, it is because um, the champ, the champ is family over here. And um, there's more to that trilogy than um, just X's and O's in the boxing ring. But um, oh, that I'm, part, not, I'm, I mean, I'm not I'm not I'm not going to touch that. I'm not going to touch that because we, we, you know, like I said, and I said on my channel plenty of times to hear me fight is fight. Um, what's going on behind the scenes? A lot of commentators don't know and a lot of fighters don't know. But that's where that's where we come in at. You know what I mean? So, you know. I understand. We, well, I understand too, but if you if you're gonna dig in, I'll give you a great example. Um Tommy Hearns and I ran Barkley. In the first fight he was beating Barkley up so badly I thought they were gonna stop it. And then Barkley hit him with one good right hand, fight was over. In the second fight, Barkley realized what what it was about. That the, the Hearn's a great fighter, great boxer. I mean, going to be considered better than me and Barkley put together forever. But at the same time, he's not, he's just not tough enough to fight a guy like Barkley who could take a shot and still land the shot because eventually he's going to get hit. That's why he would, that's why, that's why Tommy wouldn't fight me. He would never fight me because 
he knew he couldn't take me out and I'd eventually get him. Well, um, Deontay Wilder has one of the best chins in the heavyweight division and it's been tainted. And I'm just going to say this and I'm going to get off it. His chin, okay. has been com his chin has been compromised because Tyson Fury is a notorious cheater. And oh, well, that, I did not, that I did not know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what, I, what I, would, I would encourage you to do is uh, if you get a chance, go through my channel on my YouTube channel and just look at the facts whenever I spoke on Tyson Fury because he's in trouble right now. He's in trouble right now, right now, and everything is what, coming what, out for life. What did he, What did he do? Um, let's just. I'm gonna give you the short version because I really. I, want I to got you. My, you know. Okay. Um, he's affiliated with a notorious gangster, a leader of a cartel. Who oh Jesus just, Christ! This This guy's such a badass. He can't be in Ireland. He went to Dubai, and the uh, um, MTK Global. That's one of his businesses. They have to close up shop. They closed up shop yesterday. Because uh, the U.S. government put a $5 million bounty on that guy's head. And wow. if you look on YouTube, Tyson Fury is always being asked about this guy that, that claimed that he's good friends with him. This guy's been rubbing elbows with Bob Arum. Bob Arum had to disown this guy. His name is Daniel Kennehan. He disowned him. And then he threw all his businesses under the bus. Okay. I can go on and on about this guy. But Deontay Wilder was cheating. I think I lost you guys. No, we can see you. Can you see us? Can you see us, Bobby? He froze. Yeah, he froze. I lost you for a little bit. You yeah. guys all blacked out. Yeah. Oh, you there? You can see us now? You can see us now? Hello? Bobby, you can see us? Ladies and gentlemen, this is YouTube. Once I get on Fury's bumper, they do shit like this. <laughs> Bobby, can you see us? Can you hear us? Okay, somebody. Yeah, somebody's somebody's cutting us off. Oh, somebody's cutting us off on purpose. Yeah, somebody. Yeah. <laughs> can you see it? Can you see us now? I'm having a lot of trouble. It's cho it's chopping in and out. Oh, maybe you need to get get to your Wi-Fi. Get closer to your Wi-Fi. Maybe you could do that. Salute to the chat. I see y'all. I see y'all. Um, yeah, <laughs> he said too much. Press one. There I'm you back. go. All right. There you go. That's how we do it. That's how we do it. Um, you can see us. I can see you. Uh, okay, great. I can see everybody now, and I can hear everybody now. Excellent, excellent. Um, but Lord, so I don't want to make this about Tyson Fury because everyone knows who follows my channel. I have no respect for the guy. The guy's a notorious cheater, and he's gotten away with it. And he was enabled by the WBC. He was enabled by the business of boxing. He was enabled by a gangster who's paid Bob Arum over four million dollars in consulting fees. And we don't know what the fuck that was about. But I'm speculating it was it was uh, spread oh, uh, out. We we can use we can use that kind of we can use that kind of language on this channel. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, right. absolutely. I, I'm not ESPN. I, I do this for fun, you know. All um, right. Uh, uh, we gonna do, we, out, um, we gonna do this. We gonna do this again. We'll have more fun. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you know, um, the, the guy's a cheater. He's been found out, and um, well, the thing is, know, the funny thing is, the funny thing is, big as he is, he ain't that tough either. If I was six, if, if I was six foot five, oh my, forget about it. I mean, and that's what that's what it is. He has some talent, but if you if if you knock five inches off of his height, he's getting knocked all over the place. Um, but what's in darkness is coming to light because this thing with Daniel Kennehan is bigger than most people are. They're trying to ignore it, but this guy Daniel Kennehan is on the run, and he's friends with these guys in boxing, and they they froze his assets a couple of days ago. And when they put the, that cold steel on his wrist and he starts singing, watch what I tell you. He's going to throw everything under the bus. Bob All right. Arum, top rank and everything. And Tyson Fury's name keeps coming up. The people that were affiliated with, with Daniel Kennehan weren't allowed to fly over here this weekend. Matthew Macklin. I heard Savannah Marshall couldn't fly over here. I heard. I don't know if that's true or not. But, but everyone that was affiliated with Daniel Kennehan couldn't make the trip. Okay. Tyson I got Fury's you. in the UK. Did you know, Bobby? He had no boxing license in the UK for how many years? 
like four years now, three or four years now, because he popped dirty for a performance enhancement drug. And if he answered those allegations over there to their version of, of, of whatever Vada is over there, to, over there, and he lost, they were going to suspend him for seven years. So he never answered the allegations. He let his license go away and he came over here, became an American citizen and was working here, which is how when he just fought the other uh, two Saturdays ago, he was fighting from what I heard on, on an American visa, not his natural like citizenship. This is what I heard. You understand? So there's a lot of shit with this guy, but I'm just giving you the short version. You're starting to break this, up again. Okay. Yeah. YouTube does that when I start telling the truth. <laughs> That's what they do. You're starting to break up again. Yeah, I know. It, it, I think I think it's your connection, Bruce. Can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. Fine, Bruce. I hear you. Oh, boy, trust me. I, I don't. I don't doubt that the. I don't doubt that it's, it, the boxing. The boxing business is a bad business. Yeah, it's it's awful, and that's what I'm saying. It's not just black and white on on the outside of, of things. No, um, it ain't, it ain't, but this it, it isn't even gray. <laughs> yeah, man, listen, there was so much going on, and in the second fight, he had deflated gloves. It looked crazy, and then when we was pointing it out, Mauricio Suleiman, the head of the WBC, pretty much told us to kiss his ass. He's he's and a bad he, guy. He, he started working with Daniel Kennehan, and then last week, the United States Treasury. Put a five million dollar bounty on his head for any information leading to his arrest and mauricio suleiman has gone silent i was like yo i thought you was uh backing this guy mauricio suleiman said we're not interpol we're not the police we're gonna judge him and give him a second chance whatever he said and then two days after he said that they put a five million dollar bounty on this guy's head and mauricio's gone silent again and he this is not the first time he does it these guys are liars the business is dirty and tyson fury is leading the charge he's literally the biggest liar in the business of boxing but he's enabled because um he has the backing from a gangster and he's he's enabled by the wbc and he exists on this soil sorry to say because he has a complexion for the protection he's a six foot nine giant white guy who can box pretty good so they I give him that i'll be that he can, I, I was for a big man I, I give him that he can box pretty well yeah he can box, but he's also a drug cheat we was all that set to go to vegas. we was all set to go to vegas in june and then he magically caught COVID, but was seen at a car dealership with no fucking mask. And then he gets on an airplane, flies to the UK, right, to see his sick child after having COVID. And Vada couldn't get to him. Then he comes back to, to America, fights Deontay in October, round 11, six foot nine, 300 pounds. He's bouncing around around 11 like it's round one. And then, then prior to that, on fight night, he had injections in his elbow, allegedly injections. What the fuck was he injecting? Could be Novocaine, cortisone, could be a number of things. I don't know. This guy has a, he's poisoned people before. He's manipulated gloves before. You know what I'm saying? You wouldn't let a crackhead come to your door and say, yo, I'm clean now, and just have him sit in your living room unattended. I wouldn't nope. recommend it. I wouldn't do it. <laughs> so, I got news for you. I don't care who vouched for him. I wouldn't let him in the house. Yep. So what you just said about the first fight, Deontay won the first fight, but they made it a draw. The set, the, all of, Bob Arum gave Daniel Kennehan over $4 million in consulting fees from the time Tyson Fury was working with, with Bob Arum. He had four fights on American soil. What the fuck was he giving him that money for? I speculate he was giving I, the commissions and everybody working to look the other way while they did their things with the gloves and poison and water and all this other bullshit that they did do. They did it. But because people don't like Deontay Wilder, they're celebrating the uh, uh, his losses. But you know what? Time reveals all truth, and the lies nothing but the long way to the truth. Everything happening right now with Daniel Cannon and everything is going to spiral back down to those motherfuckers, and it will be poetic justice when they, if Daniel Cannon, when he gets arrested, starts singing about what he did do. Bob Arum goes to jail, and they make all the Tyson Fury's uh, uh, wins underneath the top rank bang banner make them all no contest for dealing with a fucking criminal that's just my that that that, 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 that would, i think it's gonna be hard to do that would be appropriate but i mean i and i like Dante wilder i like the way he fought it oh, I, I was in the first fight that's why i was so disappointed i did i didn't get what i was expecting i and again i didn't know about all this background bullshit so right 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 and, and I, I know you didn't know a lot a lot of a lot of people former fighters and people in the industry they didn't know 
They don't know. Well, you but, know what? That's why everybody thinks everybody thinks they know till they get. And it's funny because if you haven't been in the shoes of that man, you correct. don't know. You just don't correct. know. Correct. Exactly. And that, and that's why I I, I have to explain. I, I'm giving you the short version, but I have a lot of. Facts. I got you. We'll talk. Well, listen. We'll talk again, bro. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. But this is this is your night. We want to talk about you. We want to talk about right, you. Um, you got it, Drew. One of the things um, I was confused about. Um, Heavy Andy, you didn't know that? Yes, sir. Um, I'm reading someone in the chat. Um, one of the things I remember, I, um, uh, bring me up to speed of what happened with the Evander Holyfield situation. All right, this is this is interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, I knew Evander Holyfield wouldn't train to fight me. I knew he would think, okay, this guy's not a heavyweight. This guy's not that tough. I'm going to blow him out in one or two rounds. That's it. So I didn't believe he would train for me. Meanwhile, I train with guys that weigh 230, 225, 240, big guys. And even at that, Evander only weighed in at 211. I was 210. There was only one, one, one pound in between us, or 210 to 209. Anyway, I knew he would underestimate my toughness and get tired, and then eventually I catch up with his ass. Now... <laughs> After the second round, my eyes started burning so bad. And I know the difference between sweat and when somebody puts something on their gloves. Oh! My, the skin uh, my, the skin peeled off my face. That's how bad it was. What the hell was on the glove? I found out from two state troopers a year later that it was, it was Tabasco sauce. And that, that could blind you. Now, here's the other thing. You know who called me two days after the fight? Burt Cooper. Said the same thing happened to him when he dropped Holyfield. He said the next round, his face was on fire. He couldn't breathe. He couldn't, any nothing. Everything burned. I said, so well, you got somebody, you know, somebody in the corner is working, working it because he can't put the stuff on himself. So, uh, wait, wait, hold on. So, I got, so I got a funny feeling, yeah, but, but what are you going to do? It's over with. It's so, history. I don't worry about it. So, now, you Bobby, say, go, go ahead, Bruce. Go ahead, Bruce. Uh, I, I was Here's the say, funny I, thing. I, 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 they said when they, and I demanded the gloves were tested. So the, here's what happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Voices leak. Yeah, uh, we're, we're getting, we're getting, we're getting, we're getting triggered out again. Yeah, there's a lag in your voice. I need to hear this story. I, I asked. Uh, yeah, I told him I demanded from the referee, and I hated the referee too. He was an asshole. But I demanded mm -hmm. with the commission that the gloves be tested. So here's what they did. They took, they took the gloves to go be tested. They lost the gloves for two days. For two days. For 48 hours, they lost the gloves. Then when they tested the gloves, when they got them back, allegedly, then when they got them back, they said, tests were inconclusive. I said, there's no such thing as incon inconclusive, you asshole. There's either something on the gloves or there's nothing on the gloves. It's not inconclusive. There's only supposed to be sweat and Vaseline. That's it. And they wouldn't. They wouldn't. They wouldn't talk to me after that. They said that's a decision. It's inconclusive. It's done. Because there was more money with him fighting Mike Tyson, and that's what he did. He fought Mike for the next fight, and Mike underestimated him, seeing how bad he looked against me. Which is only apropos. It's weird, but that's the same shit. So this is what I ask all the pros on my show: just yes or no. Is there cheating in boxing? Absolutely. I didn't do Thank it. You. I didn't do it, but I, I've heard the stories and I've, I've, I've known, I've seen people do shit. Listen, go back all the way, go back to Muhammad Ali, all the way back to Ali when he fought Burt Cooper. Sheesh. I'm sorry, not Burt Cooper, Henry Cooper. I, Henry, I Cooper. Henry Cooper. Henry Cooper. Yeah. So, so they lost the gloves for two fucking days. Forty-eight. That's it. Two days. They couldn't find the gloves. Then they found the gloves miraculously, and they well. Then they tested them. And here's the thing: when they tested them, they had the balls to say it's inconclusive. What does that mean? There's either nothing on it, or there's something on it. It's either just Vaseline and sweat, or there's a, a chemical on the gloves that's not supposed to be there. So let me be clear: you had Tabasco sauce on those gloves, and you hit upside your head. Well, and first of all, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. That's what, that was what a state trooper told me. But he he remained unnamed. He just okay. said that's what, that's what the people that's what the he, he said they tested the gloves all right. But Bert but anyway, Bert having said that, he, he said it was Tabasco sauce. Now I don't know if you've had Tabasco sauce lately, but if I put some in your eye, 
it's going to be bad. You're not going to see it at eye too well, and if I punch it in your eye, it's not going to be any, it's not going to be much better. So Bert Cooper had the same story. That's what he told me. He called me. He said, "Bobby he said the same thing happened to me. As soon as I dropped him, next round, all of a sudden my face is on fire. I can't see anything." Wow! I, I oh. was just watching that fight today. Jeez. Say again. I was watching that fight today, Bert Cooper and Holyfield. Well, mm. that's what Bert told me when he called me. He called me. He said same thing happened to me. So we got two fighters that had the same situation it's against funny, the same you, guy. You, you, you <laughs> has a restaurant and, and hot sauces uh, known as the uh, the foreign substance. <laughs> yeah. That's that's I'm not not even funny, but they're kind of funny. Yeah. Let me let me say what's up to my brother, Mr. Gumbo, in that super chat. He said, "Salute Drew Trick Nolte and OG Bruce." This guy giving Tabasco a bad name. It was a slap your mama sauce. <laughs> he said it was a slap your mama sauce. Oh man, man, Evander. Let me find out. Evander has somebody in his corner putting mama's hot sauce on his gloves. It was his trainer. Holy shit! Who was his? If trainer? you go, if you go back and watch the tape, watch this, watch this, watch this. I'll give you some. I'll give you a little exercise that'll give you some uh, idea of what's going on. When you're in the gym and you're boxing. And you're training with your sparring partner, and you go back to the corner after round, after one, after every round. Your trainer rubs your gloves. He puts a little bit of Vaseline on your gloves because you don't want to cut or hurt your sparring partner. Right. In a pro fight, you never do that because you want to hurt and cut your opponent. Go back, right. watch that, watch after every one of his corner. Go after the first and second round. Watch him, watch on the Turner. I think it was, I think that's who it was, was rubbing his gloves. Why? Why? Oh shit why this is why yo yo aunt this is breaking news this is breaking uh, you news. know it's, it's it's actually old news it's been talked about a few times i've done a few podcasts with it it's not going anywhere i'm not i'm not you know it's not i'm not it's not sour grapes i i know what my plan was i and i had i had my troubles with my trainer tommy didn't want me to go blind so where i am my how about this I went to I went to two eye surgeons, and then regular ortho ophthalmologist. My vision, two days before the fight, was 2015 in both eyes. Now, the day after the fight, 2045 and 2050. I need glasses, which you see I have on, because I can't see distances. And you guys are too small. It's a distance for me. Oh my God, man! I can't see without the glasses. Oh man, did you smell anything? I did. You know what? I didn't smell anything, but that's that's not anything big. My my nose isn't that good. <laughs> <laughs> it's been it's been broken a few times, yeah, and it doesn't smell very well. Hey man, I'm not you know I'm not gonna call you a liar or whatever because I know the game is dirty. I'm not. Well, here's the thing. I got I have no reason to lie. He didn't get me off my feet. He didn't get me off. I mean, he didn't do anything big. No big deal. He didn't. You know, I couldn't. And my trainer, my trainer stopped the fight because of my eyes, but he, I thought he stopped it because of my back. I had problems with my back. I got hit by a car, and it herniated two of my discs and fractured mm. my hip pretty bad. So mm. every once in a while, I have a, I have inflammation in my, in my hip, and I can't walk. Sheesh. Shit happens. Damn, man. All right, so that that. That that's an interesting story. I'd have never thought. I was confused. The the fight just it, the, it ended like so like crazy. And then I remember them talking to your trainer, and you know he you know it just seemed everything seemed off. You didn't see. Well, if you, if, 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 yeah, I saw. But when I went back to the dressing room, I looked in the mirror. My skin was peeling off my face, but my eyes were so that the the, the metacarp metacarpals in my eyes were burst. My eyes were like perp. My they're they're like blood bloodshot red. It was bad. Oh, this is a dirty sport, man. I love boxing, but I swear I hate it. Listen, when Ali fought Cooper and he Cooper dropped him, he went back to the corner. Angelo Dundee cut his gloves, sliced them right across the front of the gloves. He so they had to get time. new gloves and he recovered. I need that time. Time. Old I was just watching that. Shit happens. Shit okay, happens. It's an old trick, man. That's dirty, man. That's dirty. Remember, you remember what Panama Lewis with uh, Aaron Parr? Oh yeah. Give, you remember what he said? No, give me one. Give me the water, water I mixed. Give me the one, the one that I, I mixed. mixed. 
you can't mix anything. <laughs> you don't mix water with water. Right. It's just straight water. That's it. Not that one. The one that I mixed. Yeah, exactly. You know, and uh, what's his name was living right here in the Bronx for a little while. Um, Kitty did that too. Uh, what's his name? Oh, God. I'm having a brain fart right now. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Bruce, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I'm, I'm having a brain fart too. I'll, I'll think of it in a second. Yeah. <laughs> I'll think of it in a second. Uh, uh, Billy Collins and Louis Resto. Louis Resto. Yo, and I can't hear you. You're on mute, bro. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Louis Resto. Louis Resto was staying in the Bronx for a little bit. You know, and he he was he was on he was on the rise, man. He was on the rise. And let me tell you, if Colin's dad don't shake his hand at the end, he gets away with it. The only way he wait, reason why he got caught is because he touched the gloves. Really, if, Collins, if, if Billy's dad don't touch those gloves, he gets away with it. Well, I will tell you what they did, dude. They cut. They took all the hair out, all the horse hair. Yeah. Out of the gloves, so he's punching with straight fist, straight fist yeah. through the leather, through the straight leather. Fist the leather, man. Oh. The the wraps, those are just as hard as. Oh yeah, no that yeah no that's bad stuff. That's bad stuff. That's awful, man. You know, see, here's the thing: if you gotta, if you, I mean, if you gotta cheat, you didn't win anyway. That's right. If you gotta mm. cheat, you know you ain't win anyway, man. Um, now I want to talk me? to you about um your, your commentating. Okay. Um, um, what happened there? I, I liked you on the on the microphone. Well, you know what happened. Uh, I'll be honest with you, I oh, got yeah. fired for telling oh, yeah. the truth. They said it was they said it was because of my fourth DUI, but I said so. What the first three didn't bother you? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I said well, I, I, look, wow. I tell you the truth. I don't lie. I mean, I made a mistake. I made a mistake, and I'm, I had to live up to it and all my stuff. I still don't have a license. I don't get it back till 2025. I haven't had it since 2003. But here's my point. When I when I here's what I did. People would write to me on a regular basis. People would would send me letters or, or stuff over the computer and say to me, Bobby, how could that how could that decision be real? Now on on air, I can't say the judge is an asshole or I say that the judge is on the take because I can't prove that. I can't prove he's an asshole or he's on the take. But mm -hmm. what I can say is this: the fight goes one way, and fighter A is kicking the shit out of fighter B. And fighter B gets a decision, something's wrong. And those judges should never judge again. Yeah. So I kept saying, follow the money, you follow the problem. In other words, on King's a promoter. If his fighter's getting beat up and he gets Ooh. a decision, that's why. Because he's been, he's, the, the judges Ooh. have been told prior to. Every close round goes to his fighter. That's the way the promoters do it. It's not just him, Bob Arams, Tuvas did it, everybody did it. And we're living in the now. I don't know what the hell happened last night with Amanda Serrano, but that was some bullshit. We just saw it last it. night. I didn't see it. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah hey, you got like a little delay. I can hear you. You got just a little delay though, but I can hear you. Trick, I told hey, you. I got a question for Bobby. Shoot, what's up, brother? And um, you know what, Bobby? Um, about twenty-two years ago, you commentated a fight with um Belinda Lara Quinta and um Christy Martin. You remember that fight? Vaguely, because only because Christy Martin was. I remember it one. She was a pretty decent fighter. Right. She fought a uh, Puerto Rican girl named Belinda Lara Quinta. She came out of nowhere. Nobody knew anything about her, and she gave Christy a boxing lesson. And he, history repeated itself last night as Amanda Serrano. Gave um, Katie Taylor a, a beating, man. I mean, a boxing lesson. I mean, Katie Taylor had a moment to the fight, but that's the first thing I thought about was Christy Martin and Belinda Lara Quinta. You're breaking, I thought, uh, you're breaking up Lara a little Quinta, bit. Breaking up? Oh, okay. Man, I don't know what's going on. I thought Lara I, I Quinta you, won though. the fight back then. Yeah, I thought Lara Quinta won the fight back then, and I thought Serrano won the fight. You're yesterday. breaking up. I'm losing you, brother. You don't keep up with women's boxing. Either. Wait, hold, hold on. Can, 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 can you hear us, Bobby? I can hear Bobby, you. I can't hear him. All right, I can't go ahead. hear Trick. Go ahead. Talk, Trick. Yeah, I was just saying um, to Bobby, um, I know, remember you commentating that fight over 20-some years ago, and it just history repeated itself because Larry Quinta beat Christy Martin, um, and then this girl here, Serrano, in my opinion, she beat Katie Taylor, and a lot of people's opinion, she beat Katie Taylor also. I mean, it was just it was a robbery, man. It was just bad for boxing. 
I'm you know what? When, when I call, when I called the, the time. right, when I called the fight as way the way I did, Christy Martin got mad at me for pointing out her shortcomings and that she got beat up. She she never really <laughs> talked to me again. <laughs> wow. Here's the thing. You, hey, man, back, here, man. Here's the thing. As an expert analyst, I'm supposed to tell the people not just what they're seeing because they're seeing it. I'm supposed to tell them why they're seeing it, and what may have happened in the training, what may have happened in the fighter's mind or body. Somebody may have got a hit in the ribs. A lot of things could happen. The, you know, the, the amount of different things that could take place in a scenario of that kind are Im immeasurable. And sometimes they just don't train, and somebody's a little tougher than they thought, and they're still there. Salute to uh, Mr. Gumbo in that super chat. He said, Drew, they make mace out of a Tabasco sauce. Fact, no, that is a fact. That's that's Tabasco sauce. It ain't no joke. No, it's not. That ain't, that ain't no I joke. Can, I'm not you know, sure that's what I got, but if, if, if that's what yeah, I got, that hurt, it was bad. If it was coming off your face, yeah, that's definitely what it was. Um, my, my, my big bro, Jonathan Simons, in the chat, he said, tell them my cousin's story, Irvin Mitchell, when he fought a Zuma Nelson. Um, Irvin Mitchell's related to him. Uh, he fought Azuma Nelson. And, and, you know, let's just say boxing corruption at its worst. Um, I'll just give you the short version. Irvin got robbed. He got done dirty. And he, he suffered some health problems after that fight, I believe. Jonathan, let me know if I got that right. You know, um, the hurt you business see, that, that, that's something people don't think about yeah I mean, this is a dangerous sport as it is i mean you guys could have a perfect camp and go in there clean as a fiddle and one punch could end your life yeah it's, it's worse when people are doing shit like taking horse hair out of gloves and juicing up on these all kinds of steroids and shit it makes it worse and you know you guys i mean let's just face it to, to put it bluntly you guys are trained killers you can't punch somebody in the face right now, and then they find out you're a professional fighter. It's different, man. No, you get yeah, you'll get some trouble for that. Yeah, yeah, it's mm. not regular anymore. Now here's and, the uh, thing, though. But here's the thing, because every once in a while you'll catch some guys in the street that want to mess with you just because you have a name. And I told I've told a few different people who got my face, and they're never they're never my height. They're like six two, six three. Those big guys. Mm. And I said, listen, this understand something. I said, the average street fight takes less than a minute, and you'll be on the wrong end of that minute. And, that, <laughs> and, then, I'm gonna do, and then I'm going to do what's right legally because I have to. And every once in a while, they come at me. I hit them. They get hurt. And then they go down, and they're out. I go to the police station. I press charges. And when I press charges, I'm making the – and I have a witness. My best friend's always with me. I have a witness that I didn't start the fight and blah, blah, blah. And then they come in like 35, 40 minutes later. And they say, we want to press charge. Bobby Chess beat me up. He said, well, he, he didn't smell like alcohol, and you do. He said, and on top of that, he had a, he had a witness. And <laughs> why did you take 45 minutes to come in? He was asleep. He was <laughs> on the floor asleep. He had to wake up he didn't, want to tell, he, he didn't want to tell him that part. <laughs> he, had, he had to wake but up. But here's the, the thing. Floor. He can, he, wow. he can only counter he can only counter press. And in court, a counter press is technically a lesser charge. He can never win. So if you know, if somebody comes at you first, you have the right to stand your ground. Stand your ground. I'm allowed to stand my ground. I'm, I'm worried about my safety. I make a living with my hands. I don't want to hit you with them. But at the same time, if I have to, I have to. Yeah. The brother Chill Time Major says it depends on which state you're in because unfortunately self-defense is illegal. I mean, these states are real funky with it. You know? No, he's, he's right. You guy's right. It's not always like in Florida where I am now. To stand your ground state, but not all states are. So mm. if you hit somebody and you kill them, you got a real problem. Yeah, yeah I'm I, I'm in Florida a couple of times out of the year, man. Florida's very Florida's very loose. I'll just say that Florida's very very loose. It's loose, man. What part of Florida you stay at? Mm. West Palm Beach. West Palm Beach. Yeah, I'm, I'm down in Palm Coast at least two times out the year. I don't know how far off is. I'm I'm about forty miles from um. Daytona. Yeah, sometime, sometime in the next six months, I'm going to move up to South Carolina because my daughter wants me up there for her wedding. Oh, excellent. Excellent. Yeah. excellent. That's good. That's good, man. So as far as the um, the business of boxing like right now, 
What is your view of it? How do you see it right now? You like know what? I'm looking in. I'll be honest with you, Drew. I've been away from it for so long. I haven't really watched it and stayed on top of it. I've been doing other things. And, you know, it's, I just, I don't, I don't know. I don't like it. what it was. I retired in 98. I didn't like what it was in 2008. I don't like it any, any better now. What don't you like about it? Well, here's the thing. All right. Now, follow, follow this because you're going to laugh. The first time, only, and if we go back to the 40s, they only had the WBA. That's it. But then when <laughs> they realized. Go. What? I said, I said, here we go. I know where you're going. Go ahead, bro. Go uh, ahead. Yeah, I'm going down the right path. Yeah. They only had the WBA. But now some of the people were bribing the WBA for some shit. So they got some decisions they weren't deserving. Blah, 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 mm. blah, blah. So then the WBC popped up saying, well, we'll keep them in check. And the same shit happened there. So then the IBF showed up with Bob Lee. And they said, well, we'll keep all three of them. And now you got three three organizations cheating. Then the WBO showed up. Then the WBU. Then the WBF. Then the NBA. Now pretty, pretty soon, it's going to be who's the champ of Fifth Avenue in Newark. <laughs> I'm not kidding. It's, 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 there's so many different world titles. And nobody wants to unify because they all want to be, you know, they all want to have their money machine. It's it's so I just walk away from. It. I just don't, I don't even want to watch it. Oh, but by, by the way, you got I got to tell you this. You're gonna love this shit. I was supposed to do a show on the 22nd of April, but they canceled it because one of the guys couldn't get a couldn't get a visa to come to the United States. But they've made this legal again. Bare knuckle boxing. <laughs> oh it's yeah. Legal again. I'll be commentating again in the near future, in the next couple of months. Bare knuckle boxing. So I got a whole new group of people to do this with no gloves and no headgear. <laughs> Man. Should be interesting. Um, Should be tell the story about the thumb, about Paula Malinaji with the talking about the thumb. The story about the thumb, remember? Which one? Oh, well, well here's the thing. Well, if you have if you have a close yeah, if you have a close fit, well Malinaji said that it's actually safer than bare knuckle boxing, boxing with gloves. That's it's not actually means actually more dangerous. The bare knuckles safer. Bare knuckles not safer. If you have a closed fist, all your knuckles protrude, especially your thumb. I hit you in the eye with my thumb. You now don't have an eye, and it's legal. So you gotta you have to take everything with a grain of salt. If you if I hit you with his right hand in the middle of your forehead, my hand's gonna break. Your forehead's gonna be fine. A lot of different things can happen with this fight. I mean, with this. Uh, New rules, no, 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 no hand wraps. Nothing. I mean, it's gonna be interesting. As hell. No, no hand wraps. That's was, because was, because I saw something about bare knuckles, but they had their hands wrapped. I swore I saw that. Well, I had yeah, they, I, the other. The one that I saw had their hands wrapped, but not to the knuckles. In other words, they had their hand wrapped around the wrists and up in you know, the back of the hand, but not the knuckles. Hmm. This is where we at. This is where we well, are with this. You know what? The further, the further, the further we look back, the farther forward we see our future. <laughs> this bare knuckle boxing was in the 1800s. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Early 1900s, it stopped, and then they got gloves and they got, they got, I guess, to a degree. I need, I need y'all to bring me up to speed because I, I totally this missed, this totally missed me. Um, I don't know everything. I never claim to know everything. When did they remove the head headgear from the Olympics? I missed it. I know. I just turned it on one day. I said, "Wait a minute." Yeah, me too. I didn't. I have this. I didn't even turn it on. I didn't even watch the Olympics. That's how upset I was with it. But they have they have new rules. They have new yeah. stupid rules. Bruce, the when rules did they do are that? Watch this. Well, here's understand this now. Watch this now. When somebody says to you, "All right, we have we have a great way to beat corruption." All right, what are you, what are you gonna tell me? Every time a fighter lands a blow, the market, the, the referee, excuse me, the judges. Or mark it down. When they see a clean right hand, they mark it down. So now you're telling me that every time a punch is thrown, everybody has to recognize the punch, no matter what side of the of the ring they're on, where they're looking at could be behind. The referee could be standing in front. Of him. He didn't see the punch. How could he write it down? You, it's some of the things they're talking about is is beyond ridiculous to the point of ludicrous. Man, I, I, and that, and that all of those punches that landed. Have to coordinate with all the other ones. Count. Yeah, I, I've I've been turned off from the Olympics. Honestly, Tay Tay said 2018. Shit, I, I missed it. Um, um, yeah, I did too. Wow, I, I've been turned off from, from the Olympics since uh, Roy Jones in, in Seoul. 
I've been turned I, off I, the Olympics since two, I haven't watched them since since two thousand, pretty much. That's that's crazy. I, mean, I, I hear, be. I hear. You know, there's a lot of guys that came out of there. I understand that, but after what they did to Roy, I saw that at home and my jaw dropped. Like, yo, there's no part of that fight that he lost. But that lit a fire under Roy's ass, and he went on to be, you know, an all-time great. But um, I was just watching it recently, and I said, wait a minute, where's that headgear? I've been out of the loop. I said, yeah, the last, last, last two Olympics, I believe. Last and that, and they, they use a 16-ounce gloves now. I mean, it's a, it's really a – it's a it's a different sport. Um, you know, when, when, Bobby, the was, same. when not, Bobby was fighting, same. you landed on, on, on the white portion of your gloves. Remember those days, man? Points. That's, yeah. That's history. Mm-hmm. The point. So no. it's different now. They don't do. It's a different point system altogether. I'm having trouble hearing you. you have, I'm having trouble hearing you. Yeah, I know you froze a little bit, Bobby. Mm. You froze a little bit. Just stay. I with can't me. hear you. Yeah, I, something's you know something's happening with your phone or, or your Wi-Fi. Or something. Hey guys, I have I have an eight fifteen uh, conference call, so I'm gonna have to check off soon, pretty soon. Okay, it's all good. Can you hear us? Yeah, I, I hear you. Yeah, Listen, yeah. Drew, it was a play. It was a pleasure. Trick, good seeing you. Bruce, Thank you, Bobby. have a nice Bruce, night, brother. Have you back. Thank my you so brother. much, Bobby. Thank Appreciate you. you. I'll come back anytime you like. Just call me Absolutely. a few days ahead of time. Well, I'll put the time aside. No problem. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, brother. All right. Good luck, guys. Be good. All right. Ciao. All right. Thank you, Bobby. Peace. Damn. I, I had so many questions I wanted to ask him about some uh, yeah. uh, some of the Tuesday night fights. And, man. Oh, the, man. I yeah, had a yeah. fucking stellar career, bro. I mean. He's one of those guys. He's an uh, underrated yeah. career. He has and, an underrated career, yeah. man. And, 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 and he offers so much, he just keeps going, man. What, 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 what a great show. If he had a couple of hours, man, it would have been a – oh. I mean, it's going yeah, to be – This, this is a nice little prelude over here, Drew. I appreciate you calling me up and trick, man. Always, bro. No doubt, man. No doubt. We, we, hey, we, we all family, you, man. man. We all family, man. You know, um, Bobby, you know, he hit me with the text. He said, yeah, I got Bobby Says. I said, wow, man, that's brilliant. And, um, you know, one thing is consistent with a lot of the guys that we, a lot of the OGs that we get up here, they're really turned off by the business today. Mm. There's nothing that makes them say, yep. oh, we got to watch this. It's rare. You know what I mean? They, they're like, they, they don't like it. And I don't blame them. And um, since we're on the topic, let's, let's, let's talk a little bit about last night. Um, I'm going to start with you, Bruce. Um, what are your thoughts on uh, Serrano versus Taylor? Man, you know, uh, it, it, it was a dog fight. You know, uh, Kate, Katie Taylor, I, I got to give her credit, man. You know, she she came over here and and, and she's got an alkali. She she she's got awards and titles, and and, and she she was she's from a little country in Ireland. She she, she had to disguise herself as a little boy and go fight. You know, I, I give her credit for co- coming into Serrano's backyard, and 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 Serrano, man, Ser- Serrano was like bred to be a fighter. That. That that cat Jordan mm-hmm. Maldonado, he he doesn't let her have a cell phone. She has she has no no life but training in the gym, winning titles, seven mm-hmm. seven world titles. I mean this 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 was the best fight of the night, man. I, I, I I'm not big on women's boxing, but now I'm I'm a fan of women's boxing, man. I, I I dug that shit last night. That 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 was a war. The decision it could have been a draw. It could have went either way. It it didn't bother me. The fight itself was awesome. I'd like to see a rematch, man. I'm a fan of Katie Taylor. I'm a fan of Amanda Serrano, man. Excellent shit, man. I love that fight. Awesome. Trick, what are your thoughts on the fight? Oh, man. Um, You know, just... You know, it's funny because you you watch the fight and both of the women, man, they went out there and they they put their heart and their soul on the line. I mean... um, Amanda uh, Serrano hurt in the first round. I mean, and, you know, most of the time when Katie Taylor was all balanced, you know, like she's about to go down, but she didn't. But, um, I mean, just at the end of the day, I mean, I, I don't think it was a draw. I thought, um, or even close to a draw, I, I thought Amanda Serrano won the fight. And the sad thing about it is Eddie Hearn has got his hand in it. So, I mean, if we do see a rematch, obviously I think it's probably going to be in Ireland, I hope. I mean, I, I, wherever they have it, as long as it's a rematch, you know. But um, I don't think they're going to run it back. That's just my honest opinion. I think that um, they're going to move forward and they're going to leave um, Amanda Serrano behind. I don't think they want their work again. That's just my opinion. 
And I love that. That's why I bought up the um, Larry Quince and the uh, Christian Martin fight up because I'm thinking right. about myself like, man, it was like I'm watching the fight because that was on the that was on the David Reed and Felix Trinidad that undercard. I got the undercard, fight on yeah. And like, yeah, man, that girl gave Christian that girl gave Christian Martin a boxing lesson, man. And I mean, last night, you know, it was like a war. But at the end of the day, I thought Amanda Serrano won the fight. Um, you know, I mean, you know, a lot, of, a lot of a lot of people are prisoners of the moment, you know. But I mean, at the same time, I mean, I thought she won the fight, you know. But that's boxing, man. Yeah, I, I, in my opinion, you know, I, I put up a video about it. Um, I used the I term it, mugging. Yeah, good video, man. It, it was a mugging, and, and the reason why I say this is, you know, um, I know Katie's backstory tough girl she fought to get to where she is i'm not taking anything away from her you know um i can appreciate her and sure. i i'll say i appreciate her more because a lot of people would have quit i know men that would have quit getting an ass whooping like that mm. but make no mistake yeah. make no mistake about it she's getting an ass whooping i gave her mm. three rounds and one of those rounds i was just being nice um mm. She lost that fight, and I'm talking about Taylor, off of pure ring generalship. She was getting walked down. And Katie Taylor, because, you know, Floyd fights off the back foot, but he can pop you and get out the way. He'll walk you into something. Um, Katie wasn't doing that. She was fighting for her life off the back foot because she couldn't walk forward because she was getting her ass kicked. So that's the ring generalship right there. Uh, the clean and effective punching was landed by Serrano. You know what I mean? So uh, we got clean and effective punching, Serrano. I looked at the numbers, Serrano. Ring generalship, Serrano. Serrano. Defense. When they mixed it up, there wasn't much defense, but Serrano was getting the better of the exchanges. In fact, Serrano didn't get cut until the 10th, but uh, Taylor was almost out on her ass like two times during the fight, and she was getting her face bust up. Yep. So um, to me, there was no part of that fight that Taylor won in abundance, and um, I don't want—I I don't want to give people credit just for getting through a fight. This is boxing. Okay, you made it to ten, you know, but no. I mean, I just think Serrano got mugged. That's just my opinion, um, and I just saw it in utter disgust. I said, "How could they get this wrong?" Because to, to me, they got it wrong. Now, if they got a draw, I'd have still been up in up in flames. Like, yo, what did you talk? Because me, and I scored it. I sat there and I yeah. watched it on mute. Because I don't like listening to the, when it's a fight that I really give a shit about. Yeah, I, don't I mute it. You know, because you know, I see Chris Mannix roaming around places. I just shut. I just shut shit off. I don't want to hear anybody. And I watched it and watched it. The first thing it's I horrible. noticed was she was getting walked down, and I said, "The ring generalship is right there." She walked that girl down and then hurt her several times in the body work punishing. I, I'm, I'm telling you, if we find out that Katie Taylor was pissing blood, it's not going to be a shocker to me. You understand? So I just Ooh. feel, and it, you know, everyone's entitled to their opinion. I understand. Um, I just feel that Serrano got mugged. Um, I had her winning seven rounds to three. And um, I don't know how... I don't know how they they if I if Katie won, I would be on here saying, yo, look, she won. But um I I just yeah. don't know what the fuck I saw. I just don't know. I don't know, I don't know what the hell that was. But what I do know is there's gonna be a rematch and they're gonna take her ass to the earth. I see you mad, Chad. I see <laughs> I see you mad, Chad. <laughs> Devon, what up? What up? Mad Chad in the building. Um, hey, they, they, they're gonna do because on the record it's a law, so now Taylor is you know, I hate saying this, shit, but she's the A side, they're gonna fly ass out to the UK. So now, man, they gotta go over there. And uh, you know, I don't know what more if Taylor won that fight last night, what more could Amanda have done? Because Amanda didn't really look like she was in a dog fight, Katie Taylor did. So, I yeah. guess that's my question, um, Bruce. What would Amanda Serrano have to do to win uh, 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 next time? Do it. The, all, all the fights are, are chosen by three blind mice at ringside. You know, <laughs> that's boxing. Three blind they, mice. They can, they, can be influenced by, they can be influenced by a crowd. They can be influenced by 
but but by the arena they're sitting in i mean man they you know they they can be influenced by anything and this is boxing we just talked to bobby chess who, who who's seen it all happen bro i mean any anything can happen and, and judging is subjective that's why marvin Hagler said man he said after that fucking video you know it's a formal fucking decision he says these these are my judges from now on yeah now, you know that's that that that's the way boxing goes man it's subjective you 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 think I'm, 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 you think Serrano won? He thinks Taylor won. Do it again, bro. If they want, to, if they want to fight again, yeah. if they're not satisfied with the outcome, and plus they're yeah. not only that, man. They're making generational wealth here. You look, boxing is a business. Yeah. Yeah. They're making yeah. fucking Rolls Royces. Even Jordan Maldonado, that goofball, has made another Rolex on this fight. So get him back in there and get get, get this fight happening once again, man. Yeah, I guess that's the only way to uh, settle it. But they're gonna settle it. You know, but they're gonna pull it to Ireland. Also, and, man, uh, uh, to in the UK. I, I'm, I, I, I don't want any. I'm, at, I'm at a place in my mind. I don't want any American fighter going overseas to fight anywhere. Well, Katie yeah. Taylor came here, so let her go. I yeah, mean, yeah, and, and, and that's what I'm saying. It's an international, worldwide sport. The WWE is involved in this now. I mean, this is. This is great for women's boxing, man. I'm, I'm not even really looking at the outcome. I'm looking at the the the, the whole the whole the whole prospect of, of, of getting this boxing to the open. And man, let let the fighters decide the outcome. If it's right, right now, you're not but seeing you know what the fight. The, the, in, in my opinion, outrageous, bro. In my opinion, OG, um, the fighters can't decide the outcome when they fight in multiple machines outside of the fighters they're facing across the ring. And that's what, that's what, just what, what we're dealing with here. Yeah, well, you know, well, we, what are we gonna do about it, bro? I mean, it's it sucks. Bob Bobby just dropped a bombshell. I had no idea. He's talking about skin melting off his face mm. from from a state trooper saying, "Yo, that was Tabasco sauce, man." He was fighting against Evander wow. Holyfield, and then Bert Cooper told him the same shit mm. happened to me, and I'm like, "Whoa, what?" I mean, that's breaking news. You know, I mean, do we call Bobby a liar? I'm not gonna call him a liar. Cause I know the sport. Nah, me neither. I believe him. I believe you know? him. Yeah, I, I know the sport. I, I know it's Evander Holyfield. We all love him, but we know boxing. We know boxing. Louis Russell insists that he didn't know yeah, that his gloves was tampered with, and he yeah. blamed till this day. He blames Panama Lewis, and he fucked off his career. He blames Panama Lewis for that. And people are saying, "No, Louis, you had to know." And Louis insists right now, damn near thirty-five years later, talking about, "No, I did not know." I spoke to him. He was out there in, in, in a Morris Park gym. I spoke to him. He says, yo, I said, you really didn't know? He said, I did not know. He, I did not know. He's standing on it. He said, now he has nothing. Wow. No career, nothing. But he's standing on it. Now to me, nothing. now, if you lied, by now you don't lost everything. Wouldn't it be, make sense if you were lying about it? You'd be like, yo, fuck it. You know what? Okay. I did. But he got no, a lifetime no. ban. Louis Resto, Lu I, I I followed that. I saw that the night it happened, bro. I was having a cup of coffee reading the paper. That that was the night Duran beat Davey Moore, and that was on the undercard. Right. And man, Louis Resto admitted he, he he did time for that. He 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 actually went up to Panama Lewis and said, Panama, I I I, I know what happened. I admitted it. I, I was guilty. Why don't you just admit you were part of it too? And Panama Lewis, no, 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 man. You you're mistaken. It was an HBO special. Mm, yeah. yeah, yeah. And yeah, um, when, I, when I asked him, yeah. when I asked him, he said no. He said no. Well, now, he, 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 he admitted it. He now, admitted now it looking, looking back, when he was telling me no, he may have meant he didn't do it alone. Mm. Mm. He may have meant he didn't do it alone. Now, yeah. I didn't indulge because not for nothing, you know, I ain't trying to be a jerk or nothing. He was kind of, you know, he was kind of sippy. You know what I mean? I'm, I was shit. You know what I'm saying? But I was like, man. But listen, he fucked off his career, man. You know, he was that, good. Yeah. Yeah, that, that damaged his uh, relationship with his sons, too, you know. That um yeah. hurt him, you know, damaged his relationship with his sons. You know, he missed out on years with his grandchildren and everything. It, 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 but it ruined he finally, so many he lives, finally came clean. Yeah, yeah, I did. I just hear it. Ruined yeah. So many lives. You know, Billy Collins ended up committing suicide because of it. Uh, you know, his 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 right. wife all, all fucked up. His parents, man, and you know, one 
That, that's yep. why boxing, it's a dirty, stinking game, and it's not going to change. That shit can happen today. It happened 30 years ago. It happened fucking 50 years ago, 100. Bro, we, we, we live in a dirty sport, and, and what keeps me to it is, is the action in the ring. That, that's what I pay attention to, man. I try to stay away from, obviously, you know, you, you can't stay away from cheating and things like that, but, you know, all, all, all this side bullshit, how much they're making, why the fight's not being made, and, you know, all, all these, side, these side venues, and, and, you know, people are, uh, people hate each other about some of this shit, bro. That's, yeah. that, I, I, that's what I'm, 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 not even, I'm not even involved in that, man. I look at the fights, and, and last night, Ser Serrano and Katie, Katie Taylor, that, that, that was a great fight, man. That was the best yeah. fight. Right. That was a little fucking Ollie Fraser. That, that had everything. They, they, they stole the show. That they lived up to the hype, man. Bro, I'm a, I'm a fan of women boxing yeah. right now, man. Yep. <laughs> they, they stole the show. I was I was so impressed, man. They, I was standing up in my living room. I said, yo, look at they this. They got to run it back. They got to run it back. And, yeah. I, and listen, I know in all fairness, they're going to they're gonna drag her across these. I'm just saying, being that I know the atmosphere of boxing, just because we don't talk about it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. And I'm just not comfortable with my American fighters going abroad because I know how they get down over there. They've proven themselves to be incredible over there in the UK. I mean, let's just face it. Anything over there, they've proven themselves to be incredible, and I don't trust it. I don't want, and even in Australia. Now, listen, I, I break this down as simple as I can. I don't want Devin Haney going to Australia. Why? Not that I, I'm, I'm he I, he can whip Cambosis ass on the on a fair playing field, but Cambosis is, is affiliated with DeBella. DeBella is is a, a, is a part of Pro Bellum, which was touched by Daniel Kennehan. So once I know that cloud is there, I don't want Devin going there, but he's going. I don't want uh, uh, um, uh, 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 Clarissa Shields going to, to the UK to fight uh, Savannah Marshall, but she got to go. Savannah Marshall, from what I heard, being that she was affiliated with Daniel Kennehan in some way, she wasn't allowed to fly mm -hmm. over here. Did y'all know that? Anybody that was affiliated mm -hmm. with Daniel Kennehan wasn't allowed to fly over here. A lot of people didn't know that. I, I and, and I still, this is what I was told, and I, I was told from my brother L Dub, a very reliable source. Math, Matthew Macklin couldn't come here because he was supposed to commentate. They stopped his ass at the airport. I did a video on it. Mm. Now to stop Savannah Marshall and a couple of other people. Ben Davidson can't come in. Did y'all know that? Mm -hmm. They stopped Ben Davidson's ass mm -hmm. from coming over this Kennehan shit. So this shit is deep. And I'm saying all of that to say this. Yeah. Our fighters, are, this is what they have to deal with. This is what they have to deal with. So they're not only fighting the people across the ring from them, they're fighting the system. So when I say system, grand scheme, these are the things I'm talking about. I would love to just put this shit aside and just watch boxing. But these motherfucking gangsters are fucking everything up. They're fucking mm. everything up. And it was a nice fight last night. I just think those three blind mice, as you call them, OG, those three blind mice, they got, I, I just think they got it wrong. And I would love to see a rematch, even if they got it right. Because respect to Katie Taylor, even if they got it right, in my opinion, and they gave it to Amanda, I would love to see that fight again. Because what Katie did show was that she had, she didn't panic. As bad as she was getting her ass kicked, she didn't panic. She listened to her corner. She wiped that blood off her face, and she just kept at it. So I'll give her all the credit in the world for that. She's tough. She is tough. I just personally feel they got the call wrong. But do, but I want to see it again. I want to see it again. Definitely want to see it again. Yeah. And at this point, especially if they go to Ireland, Katie, um, uh, Amanda needs a knockout. Cause she did, she did all she could do last night outside of knock on her ass. It reminds me of Marquez versus Pacquiao. I'm watching Marquez outbox this guy, and they keep giving it to Manny. So the fourth fight, he says, "Yo, fuck it, I gotta mm. take a risk." And he finally, he finally got it done. Bro, you know how big Katie Taylor is in Ireland today. Oh, I mean, bro, I, dude, oh, bigger, I can imagine. Bigger, big, big, bigger than Lennox Lewis was when he won his title. I mean, b bigger, bigger than than uh, fucking and anybody on there. It, 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 it made the national news, not the sports news, the national news, and that hasn't happened in in, in like 40, 50 years, bro. I mean, it's 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 a holiday in in Ireland today. They oh, they, yeah. they are so into women's boxing, 
and you know could, boxing's a dirty world could, could it be fixed it's boxing the, the the outcomes there's been disputed decisions forever nobody's ever happy with a decision but when, when when fighters get involved in boxing that's the dirty game that you're getting in and they they know that bobby chess knew that bobby chess could have been a fucking doctor he could have went to fucking uh, yeah. military academy guys are mental and, and he got into that fucking dirty sport of boxing and he knew what he was getting into and and, and he loves it and he's, he's still involved in it and that's that that, that that's the swamp we we live in bro this is this is yeah. boxing today man I, it's, it's I, I i don't let it bother me drew if it did yeah. i i'd be dead a long time ago bro man. You know? <laughs> i love fucking boxing let, let me, let me I love everybody let, who loves boxing let, let me give you another point i remember when katie taylor was getting celebrated on on twitter and I started getting these screenshots. And I believe she won the Olympics. When she won in the mm. Olympics, I believe. Gold medal, yeah. And and they were celebrating her and everything was fine until a company I had never heard of congratulated her and said, Hey, congratulations, Katie, on your latest win. And people start responding to that company. They're saying, Oh my God, keep your hands off of her. That company was MTK mm. Global. And I said, who are these guys? Why is everyone from Ireland telling them, keep your hands off of this woman? And I said, what the fuck? And then I started doing some research and that's when I started finding out things. And I said, oh shit, <laughs> oh man. So, you know, salute to Katie, enjoy it, man. She fought, okay, enjoy it. I think they got it wrong, but like, like the OG said, this is boxing. So I was mad, but what are you gonna do? We've we've seen this before. Um, Holyfield yep. versus Lewis won. Y'all remember the outcome of that? Oh my gosh, bro. Man. Wow. Yeah. Bro. Holyfield versus Ruiz won. Bro. Yeah, he is always controversial. It is when he got the heavyweight, so it was always some controversy with his fights. You write the, the first Lennox Lewis fight, the first yep. John Ruiz fight, yeah, the Bobby Chance fight. <laughs> Oh. Holyfield been involved in some controversial wow, shit, man. Holyfield. I ain't gonna lie. Holyfield been involved in some controversial, and we love the guy. Man, he, <laughs> he's been involved in some controversial in shit, man. That, I remember I was at I was at a bar when I saw Holyfield Lewis won, and I said, "Bro, he ain't win that fight. Mm -hmm. He it wasn't no draw. Nah, it was none man. of that. No, it was no draw. Lewis won that fight, man. But it's boxing." Lewis ain't complained. He said, "I'm gonna do it again." And he did it again. Yep. You know what I mean? But this, this is this is the sport, man. This, you know. I, I, Hold I on, man. Like, the Hossley Rockman fight. The Hossley Rockman oh, yeah. fight with Holyfield head butted him. He had that. I don't know what he had to hold another person. I think I think one of his sons was being born out the top of his head. <laughs> God damn! And, and salute to Hossley Rockman's son, man. He fought Tommy <laughs> Morris's son. He got stopped the other night. He got stopped Friday. Yeah, yeah, you know, man. Hey, shout out to my wife. Fight. Just get me a water, man. Bro, I try. I tried to watch that fight. The, uh, that whole card, the, uh, the 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 night of the Sons of Legends, and man, mm -hmm. that, that, there were some nice little fights on there. I caught um, I caught Hasim Rockman's uh, uh, other son, dude. I can't think of his name, but he fought this guy named Sanchez, and in Sanchez, Sanchez was the son of this guy. I don't know if anybody remembers him. His name was Augie Sanchez. He fought Floyd. He was, he he was yeah, I, I talked on Facebook. Uh, okay, Trick. His son fought Hussein Malkman's younger son. And there was a fuck it. It was a good little scrap, okay. man. Oh, yeah? Uh, oh, a, tr uh, a tremendous headbutt. The worst kind of headbutt where the blood goes in the eye. But Hussein Malkman's kid came back from that. And, and, and he, st he stopped Sanchez. It was, it, that was a great fight. And then Roberto Duran's son, Bobby Duran. He fought. He fought some nineteen-year-old kid. I can't remember his name. And name I'm, I'm so bad with. And uh, he got beat, but he looked like Roberto Duran. He fucking. Oh yeah. He, he fought like Roberto Duran. He had that little beard going on, and oh yeah. Wow. I, I'm, I'm like, dude. I not. If, if I didn't drink coffee, I, I, I would have shoveled six espressos down me, man. Cause I, I wanted to stay up. But but this was already one o'clock, and the uh, the co-main event didn't even start. That was Mike the Bounty Hunter's son. My he, yeah, you, you remember, you know, God rest his soul, Mike the Bounty, great great fighter, man. Uh, Mike, the, people don't realize this. This guy at one point in his career, he beat Pinkman Thomas, James Tillis. You know, he had a great little string there, and uh, you know, he passed away, and now his son. 
and, and and that's when I said I have to go to bed. It was like two o'clock, and uh, I missed that one. But 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 I caught the uh, the, the the Morrison and the uh, Rockman Jr. Rockman. One. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and it's cool because I, I just talked to Rockman Jr. a few weeks ago, and you know, and, and we're friends on Twitter. We, we go back and forth a little bit, and um, man, he he was so serious about this fight. He, he was so so into it. And, and, and he was he's a thoroughbred man he grew up with his dad when his dad had the belt and he, and he went to he, he trained with emmanuel stewart you know he he went all over the country he, he's met every every trainer all over the world actually you know he he, he was and this was going to be his his squad and man he used to fight and and, and morrison's kid looked just like his father he looks he just like him man looks just like him Took the same style coming forward. I'm like, oh, those his dad's shorts. Yeah, yeah, same size. You know, yeah. maybe yep. you know, five, eleven, yep. six feet, but you know, two hundred and twelve, two hundred and fifteen, and he just had that same style, man. The you know, the cross arms in the front, always looking, always winging those wide punches, and uh, fucking Hasim Junior, boxing just like his father too, man. Same style. Man, I want to say something about that. His mannerisms in the ring, his positioning. Um, the way he, you know how Hasim used to stand up straight like that when he walked around the ring. Mm. His son does the same thing, mm. Mm. and I don't think that he's trained to do that. That's just instinctive. You can tell that that's his son. It, you know, it, it it didn't work out because apparently Morrison he can crack like his dad. He he surprised me. He he surprised. Yeah. He really surprised me, and and he was in really good condition. He had he had good footwork. He, he dominated. I, I think he surprised the hell out of Hasim Hasim because I, uh, you know, I haven't I haven't spoken or, or written to Hasim yet, man. You know, I I, I don't know what's going to happen after his first loss. I I hope he comes back because he loves yeah. boxing. He lo he loves the sport. You talk to him, you can feel that in him. You know how you yeah, how I can feel that in you guys, bro. You know. Yeah, yeah. Tell him tell him get back in the saddle, man. It's about he knows that. Look, he, just yeah, go look at your dad's career. <laughs> Look at your dad's career. He yep. knows that. I mean, Hasim, he, I'm, shit. He, I seen him, you know, he fell out the goddamn ring with Oleg McSkyoff. And um, I seen him a couple of fights later get in there and uh, 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 he obliterated Khalid Mihan. Remember that shit? Mm, One yeah, round. He, he was got him out of there. HBO fights. Great, great. Oh, HBO man. after dark fights. I but but any, anyway, man, it, it, it was like it was like a dip into the fucking nostalgia well, man. And um, it it, it, it was a really cool way to start the weekend. And then and and then, man, waking up to Saturday and 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 what we had Saturday night, and man, it's a great time to be a boxing fan, bro. Yeah, yeah. The the, the this 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 month did right by us. It did right by us, man. And um, of course, it's boxing. We don't get the outcomes we want, but. We did get the matchups that that uh, made sense. Mm -hmm. Dare I say, we got the matchups right. that made sense, and um, it now gave how us about a lot the Shakur Valdez fight? The what? The Shakur mm. Shakur Stevenson fight. Shit, mm. that was an education. That wasn't a mm. fight. That was an education because you know what? Yeah. Valdez couldn't throw a rock into the ocean. He was punching fresh air. I yo, you listen, Shakur is scary good. He's a kid, man. He looks like a baby yeah. to me. <laughs> He's a kid, <laughs> and he's 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 scary good, man. He wasn't even winded. No, no, he was picking his shots, and he wasn't. I mean, at the end of the ring, he did troll, and he literally turned his back and did a lap around the ring. He was trolling, but he fought in the pocket, and Valdez was throwing heat. Mm. If Valdez did land one of those things he was throwing, it it made things interesting. But it's like when you're on that level, the game slows down. He could oh. literally oh. see what Valdez was throwing before he threw it. And I was listening to the Reynoso corner. I mean, I couldn't understand shit. I unmute the TV when I'm listening to the corner. They were talking in Spanish. But it, I can tell that they were so confused for two reasons. I think it was round five. He forgot to put his goddamn mouthpiece in him. In, in, yeah, 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 yeah. I said, what the fuck? That's trainer of the year? <laughs> and then, insult to injury, I look at Canelo. He's standing there. He's sitting there like... Mm. He was, he was literally shaking his head like there was, was nothing they could do. And and the best with part pajamas was, on. With pajamas. <laughs> and the best part was, and y'all know I'm petty. They said, well, Shakur said, I beat 
the Reynoso gym. Did he say that? Or Team Reynoso? He said something about that. Yes, he did. And yep. salute to Freshawn yep. Cruz Desern. She said, I had to deal with all the cheating. And, and then Clarissa Shields co-signed it. She said, yeah, she had to deal with the cheating. And then and, and then Shakur said, I beat Team Reynoso. Because all of these, they, they're talking about the cheating in boxing. And I said, man, that's great. Yep. That is just great. And Valdez... It played out how I figured it would. Now, there's always that chance because Valdez is a strong puncher. But he just didn't touch him. Now, my only critique is that I feel that if, if Shakur, because he was the bigger guy, and that's what people didn't realize until the face-off. Shakur was the bigger guy. I think if he put the gas on it in round 10 and 11, he could have stopped Valdez. I think he could have stopped him if he put the gas on it. But um, he won it convincingly. There's no need for a rematch because nah. you're going to get more of the same. You know, um, this kid is scary good, man. Um, I think Canelo was having flashbacks at ringside of uh, him and Floyd in the ring. Oh, man. Yeah. And look, and, and yeah. you notice, you know, when Canelo, when he, when someone from his camp is in the, in, in, in the ring, you notice sometimes he'll jump up and start shouting directions. He didn't do that not one time last night. He didn't do it not one time. He uh -huh. sat his ass there because it was what needed to be done. Valdez couldn't do because he's not on that level of talent. Avery Jackson says he did the mouthpiece thing on purpose, Drew. He may have. We, we were just talking about how Ali did a trick with the gloves, you know, when, 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 when Henry Cooper knocked him on his ass. You know what I mean? Um, so I wouldn't doubt it because why would a, 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 a trainer like Reynoso on that caliber forget to put the mouthpiece in his <laughs> In his in his fighter's mouth, that's a that's a mental collapse, or he did it on purpose. There was nothing they could do. Bruce, do you remember? And do you remember when um, Chavez was fighting Meldrick Taylor? Oh shit, yeah. And um, do you remember the instructions from the corner of of, of, of uh, Chavez? There was no technical instructions. It was do it for your family. Your family's right there. No, Do it exactly. for your family. There was like nothing. There was nothing. Move to the left family. and stick the jet. That shit was gone. Because there was something about Mel they, were, they were concerned like, yo, this guy's going to beat you. And we all know how it played out. But I mean, look, I think it, it, I wanted to hear what they were saying in English in there. Because there, I, there was nothing he could do. Mm, nothing. That was the best Oscar Valdez. That was the same Oscar Valdez that slept Burchell. Okay, uh, the same Valdez yep. that fought, C C what's that guy? The, the, the Brazilian dude, C what was his name? Conseco? Conseco? Uh, Conseco? I, 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 I couldn't, I couldn't mention that name. Yeah, yeah, I know, he, I know you mean though. But, but, dude, we, we, we saw, we saw the best uh, the, of, of Valdez that, that we that we could see. But, but Stevenson, he, he just amazed me. I mean, he, he really amazed me. He, he was just so, so fleet of foot. He had that the Sugar Ray Leonard, the side to side. You're not going to hit the man. And then, yeah. and then, and then, when you opened up and tried to hit him, ba -ba bang, ba -ba bang. I mean, dude, if, if if he had just landed one convincing punch to the jaw, but Valdez was smart enough to hug him every time he got inside. He wasn't going to exchange because he knew he had no chance. The only he, he was only if, only if if he to wear him down with those hooks, and and it wasn't happening. Sh sh uh, Stevenson was just just too good. He, he was going side to side. He would stop. He'd faint. Valdez was totally, totally outclassed. I think he was. He was lucky. He 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 hung on to the end. I think he just survived so he wouldn't get hit because uh, it was it, it, it was it was not even a contest after all. Even even, even the Valdez supporters, they, he got beat by the better man. No, that's it. That's it. No, so no, nothing. He, 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 he got he couldn't handle one of the best pound for pound fighters today. So what's next for him? And LeVon Don I agree with you. I agree with you. I agree with you, LeVon. I agree with you. So what's next for uh for him? Oh man. Oh. Hey, Drew. Up to lightweight to to face one of the four queens. That's what's next for him. <laughs> what you say? Yeah. Well, let me let me say this real quick. You know, um, I was um uh, talking with some guys. They were saying how um Oscar Valdez's um uh corner should have stopped the fight. Um, probably within maybe the ninth round, tenth round, because he was no way he was gonna win. I say no, let him take that beating because when he tested positive and Maurice Sassoon, let him fight. They didn't stop the fight and they let him keep going. 
So thank you. The last one, but he got for cheating. Yep, enabled so by the if, WBC. If, if with Bruce, yeah, he didn't. Yeah, so no, don't stop the fight. He he tested positive, and y'all let that fight go. So let him keep continue to get that ass whooping he was getting. That's the way I see it. I mean, I don't Too see nobody get hurt, but if you going in, he, all, he wouldn't. Uh, he wouldn't have wanted to fight. fight stopped anyway, man. He's a he's a tough Mexican, right? Exactly. You know, he's in there for exactly. blood. He's in there to kill, to kill Stevenson. Let these guys fight. It was a yep. another uh, another convincing ending. To, to to a dominating performance, and, and we just saw we just saw Stevenson graduate, man. I think I think we saw him get his get 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 his doctorate over here, man. He already had his his PhD, man. He already had his masters. This th th this was just just showing everybody, man. I am one of the best in the world now. Uh, this I'm not gonna chase anybody. You're gonna, you're, you're gonna have to come to me. I am I, I am I'm the best at 130. I am probably the not, I I'm the best at 135. You know, get in line. That's that, that's the way I look at Shakur Stevenson right now, man. He's just, he's. I I think um, I think I think that's his next step. That's his next step. You know, um, and he can get it done. I have faith in the kid. Um, he's grown substantially. I saw um, a mm. video of him in the in a club. He was with Floyd Mayweather and Bud. He's not that much smaller than them. Mm. You, you can tell he's growing before our eyes. He's yeah. He, he's he's well, got room to fill out and, and he didn't like like everybody says his man strength that's the truth you can tell he's going to get stronger he's not going to lose that agility that that speed he, he's just going to get stronger he's going to fill out get solid move up to 140 maybe 147 maybe even higher but but i can see him he's a growing boy man let's face it yeah he's, he's growing he's, he's, he's growing he looked big Suit last Jimmy night boxing. he looked big last night he, he did boy. he did he's Suit not going to make 130 he said, Drew, just watch Evander and Bobby. Didn't see what Bobby suggested, but I did see a dominant performance by Evander. I'm going to go back and look at it. I'm going to go back and look at it. Yeah, you know. I'm going to go I'm gonna go have a look. I'm going to go have a look. And you know, you know what, man? Bobby Chance hurt Holy. He hurt the Holy Field with a left hook in the, in the first round. If that whoever, whoever put that up there, go and watch that fight again. He hurt him in the first round with a good left hook. He kind of buckled Holy Field a little bit. Yeah, Bobby I'm, had I'm good curious. short punches wanna, on the wanna, inside here. Nice. I, I haven't watched that fight since it happened, to be honest. So, I, but I yeah, knew about it. I, I, I got. I'm watching yeah. it though. Yeah, that that fight is over 20 years old. Over 20 years old. So I, you know, I, I'm gonna go back and look at it. Oh and yeah. See what he's talking about. Yeah. So you know. So yo, listen, guys, man. Yo, Bruce, let them know how they can find you. Hey, man. Uh, Bruce go. Bruce Gas. Boxing, jazz, and more. You know. He, I, I'm there at least on two, every Tuesday night with my friend George Jakovic. We we talk about Tuesday night fights. We bring we bring some old fighters on there when we can. Not, not I'm not saying old fighters. They they they're younger than me. Half of these guys are young enough to be my kids. But anyway, man, I, I appreciate. It. I just I, I just hit 500 subs, dude. That's that, that's a milestone. All right. I just started my channel a couple of months ago, man, and I'm like fucking, you know, I, I'm ready to break out the, the Dom Perignon and, and, and spray the giant <laughs> down, bro. But anyway, man, my brother Trick Nolte, man, Drew, Drew Titan, thank you so much for, for inviting me on here. And, and and everybody out in the chat, man, you know, I, 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 I saw you I saw you salute me, man. I salute you all. I, I, I was captivated because I, I wasn't planning on this, man. Yeah. Uh, 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 you know, seeing see, see one, of, one of the idols, man, one of the idols from the day, Bobby Chez. And, and, and getting a text from Drew, from Drew, you want to hop on? Shit, do I want to hop on, man? <laughs> <laughs> no, you, 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 you put a smile on my face. You know, you 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 made the, you made this old guy's night, man. I appreciate it, man. Nothing but mad love out there, man. You know, peace. No doubt. And salute to you, Mad Chad, man. You know, you're always welcome, brother. I, I'll get you up here too. I, you know, I, you know, I'm sub to you. I see everything you're doing with the music and everything. You know what I'm saying? Salute to you. And, and salute to Chris Perkins. He said went to the fight last night, ran into Bow Mac on the escalator. The dude is huge. Listen, um, before I forget, y'all, I'm not gonna be live tomorrow morning. You know, duty calls. I yeah, I gotta go to the day job early. Um, but I won't be going live tomorrow. Tuesday, I gotta address. <laughs> Yo, Ed, did you see what what Errol Spence did with Bow Mac's box wreck? No, uh. I'm gonna text it to you. No, I said I didn't. Uh. -uh. Bro, I almost threw my goddamn phone off my balcony. I was fucking rolling on the floor laughing. <laughs> Yo, Arrow has turned into the biggest fucking troll I've ever seen. I don't know where this came from. I don't know if he got people doing it for him, but it's funny. But Bud is firing back. He's like, yeah, it's funny until I'm whipping your ass. He's something he said. I saw I saw a screenshot from Twitter. But they talking. I like it. I need mm. both of them. Bud, talk your shit. 
ever talk your shit. Because this is, yo, I'm going to send you this text. Yo, he violated Bo Max box rack. I had tears coming down my guy. You'd have thought someone put Tabasco wow. sauce in my eyes. It is funny. It is funny, man. But no live tomorrow. I got to go to work. I'll be back Tuesday morning. Yo, Ed, let them know how they can find you, brother. And salute to you, Chris, in that super <laughs> super chat. Much love, man. Woo. <laughs> no. Hey, you can uh, ahead, find me on Facebook, Anthony Carter. That's my government name. Um, I'm on Instagram, Trick Nolte. Um, I'm on this Sunday with Drew and the Sensei. And sometimes, you know, Bruce Gass. We're chopping up with the legends and talking some boxing. And you know, everybody out there in the chat, salute. Beautiful Queens, Diana Branch, Shauna TV, Bowley Bowl, all of y'all, man. Salute to all of y'all. Macadosh, Mac of the South, salute to all of y'all. Drew, thank you for having me on, bro. I appreciate you. Yo, man, anytime. Anytime, bro, man. You look out for me so much, man. I appreciate you, man. You know what I mean? So, yo, y'all, y'all already know what it is. Drew Titan, Bronze on deck. Shout out to the mighty LDBC. I know the fight party's coming on. Salute to Bobby Shaz. We're going to have him back. Um, no live tomorrow, and and damn, I, I wanted to cook tomorrow on so much, but you know, I'm not rich, you know. Saying so I got I got a day job, I gotta go, you know, <laughs> gotta handle business. But I'll be back Tuesday morning, y'all. Man, much love to all of y'all, man. Much love and appreciation. And uh, again, go to the fight party. Salute to the wrench gang. Come on. I'm a fool. And uh, yeah, I I'll catch y'all Tuesday. Um, but Painful Excellence Podcast tomorrow night, though. Much love and appreciation, yo. We out. Move! Why are you gay? Who says I'm gay? You are gay. <laughs>